this is a special lens. The moment you look through it, you go, wow. When I first made the video about this, the audio is too compressed for people listening through headphones, so I remastered it, added a few shots, and now I'm re-releasing the video so you can re-enjoy the video the way it was meant to be enjoyed. Ready? Here we go. Enjoy the video. Today we're in beautiful St. Lucia doing a bunch of photo shoots, obviously in a beautiful tropical location. And I have with me today my new Sigma 105 1.4. This is a monster lens. This thing is probably the heaviest lens I've ever had. This is in the field, on location. I carry with me as much stuff as I can, but I try to keep it obviously lightweight. And this definitely does not match the lightweight category. But it gives a soft, blurry background bouquet, unlike any other lens I have ever had. It, it is amazing. This replaces both my Sigma 135 and the 85. It's kind of in between. So if you take the weight of both lenses and the size of both lenses, it kind of equals this. So I'm, I'm actually getting rid of two other lenses that I have and uh, keeping this one. Now this isn't heavy. If, you know, this is a monopod lens. It, you, if you try to do this with one hand, which I, I am constantly doing, um, you're really going to get some strong wrists with that thing. So what I end up using, I notice while I'm in situations like this and I'm on a run and gun and I got to do some fancy photography, it's the 105. But the thing about the 105 is unless you get half a mile back and you're not going to see very much because it's kind of a telephoto lens. So if you're in a beautiful location like this and you want to see some of the background, you want a wider lens that shows more. So that's why I use the 50. This is a really lightweight. It's the Sony or it's the Zeiss. 55 1.8 it says a really lightweight you should never go anywhere without this i do a lot of shots with this uh and the other lens is the 35 uh the zeiss 35 1.4 those are the only three lenses i end up using i use the 105 55 and the 35 and that's it that covers pretty much everything i ever need uh, i'm getting rid of or i'm not getting rid of it but i'm finding myself less and less using the 135 and the 85 but the, the 105, my God, I mean, the look is amazing. It works really good. It focuses really fast. Uh, this is the Sony version. Uh, it weighs a ton. Uh, I think it weighs in at about 56 pounds. I'm just kidding. It's so heavy, it has its own tripod mount. <laughs> Forget the camera, the lens needs its own mount. This is my basic setup. So I have my uh, soft boxes, tripods, light stands, my cameras, lenses, um, and a couple of strobes to go all godox equipment obviously here's another one over there i'm going to show you a couple of pictures that we're going to be taking or have taken with this lens so far there's a jungle in there so we've shot some pictures in the jungle now we're about to do some shoots on the beach so come along for a fun ride on the beach it weighs a lot it's not cheap either this lens is not for everybody it's super heavy it's really big in my opinion you know some of you might say well how does it compare with the 70 to 200 i've i really i've only used the 70 200 maybe twice i don't know why i just don't use it that much i'm more of the prime lens guy i like that soft blurry background and i know the 200 does that but it's a big bulky lens and when you get into the 70 range it doesn't really blur the background that much so that's why I use stuff like this. After all the lenses that I've got, and I've got a lot of lenses, it comes down to the 105, 55, and the 35, and that's pretty much all I'm happy with when it really gets serious. If I only have to pick one lens for anything ever for emergencies, it's the 55, and if I want to have a little bit more of a blurry background, it's the 85, but if I really want to have some really cool stuff, 105. It costs $1,500 and it weighs more than a Buick. This is definitely a love-hate relationship. It takes great pictures, but damn, this thing is heavy and big. It's definitely not for everyone. It's the least fun lens to use of all my lenses. It's awkward, heavy, bulky, not easy or fast to put on or take off. The lens cap doesn't go on very easily and it accidentally comes off all the time. And because the glass is so big, it's very easy to get sun hitting the glass. And it's not as forgiving with glare, so images wash out easily unless you really go out of your way to block the camera from the sun which is a real hassle and almost impossible when you're doing run and gun shooting spontaneously if the sun is behind you great but if it's in front of you watch out also when you look through the lens for some reason everything looks washed out but when you see the picture on a computer later it's fine it's weird I've heard other people who use this lens say the same thing I like to see what I'm getting as I'm getting it it's a very specific lens made mainly for portraits it's definitely not a versatile multiple-use lens especially for people who are always on the go the 
Zeiss 85 is sharper, faster focusing, much smaller and lighter and less expensive, but there's something magical with pictures taken with the 105. So it may sound like I hate this lens, but that's not true. It can take some really amazing pictures. It's a heavy hitter for anyone doing portraits, and it has just the right amount of background compression so you can get that cool look of those old 3D postcards. But if you're always on the go and you need to travel fast and light, this is not your lens. This is definitely for professionals who are used to big heavy equipment and doing serious professional photo shoots with an assortment of primes. If you want versatility, get the 70-200, but that's heavy and big too. If you want ultra lightweight and small, get the Zeiss 85 1.8. The 105 1.4 is a consideration for bokeh loving portrait photographers shooting in large spaces or outdoors. If you're into bodybuilding, this is a great lens to use. It's heavy. It's kind of like like the old school exotic sports cars. You know, big, heavy, clunky, hard to control, but lots of horsepower, and it does its job really well when unleashed, outperforming almost everything else out there. It definitely can deliver pictures with a wow factor. It's not a fun lens to use, but where this lens really shines is after you use it and you look at the pictures you took. By the way, I'll make a special video about each of these photo sessions so you can see more of these pics. You might not use it all the time, but when the time comes, you'll definitely feel you're missing something if you don't have this lens. So I hope that helped. I'm here to give you real-world feedback, not just a bunch of numbers and specs. These are the decisions. Do I have, am I able to carry this heavy lens? Do I have the weight? But what kind of look ultimately do I want? So yeah, it's worth carrying a little extra weight to, to really far away locations if you're able to do that. So uh, let's go, let's take some pictures. If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and tell your friends about Marcus Picks because I do all kinds of really cool, fun tips and tricks, but I give a lot of free stuff away too. A lot of gear, cameras, lights, recording equipment. So subscribe and tell your friends about Marcus Picks and I'll see you in the next video.